it was mastered so loud it was almost a mistake. So my question is, did they win the arms race for loudest sounding record ever? And 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 if Metallica did it, wouldn't that be almost just about right? Well, <laughs> actually, in fact, the, the the record was mixed by Andrew Sheps, um, okay. who is a another um, you know super successful um, mixing engineer and a really nice guy, um, and he likes to say. I won the loudness war with that record. <laughs> so now let's all go home and do something else. Right. Um, I mean, the funny thing is there since then, there have been records that have been louder. Um, mm. I think probably there were records that were louder prior to that. I mean, the interest, the, the fascinating thing about that is, as you say, kind of all these different factors that came together. So you had, you had this super loud record and the Metallica fans complained. I mean, Metallica fans are famous for complaining, so I don't know how much store we should necessarily put to that. They, the, there was a previous record, St. Anger, where they complained bitterly about the snare sound. Yeah. There was a, an album where they felt there wasn't enough bass guitar in the mix. You know, I mean, they death, uh, heavy metal fans, and mm. even uh, death metal fans as well, but metal fans in general, given that it's a very loud, distorted, aggressive genre, right. are super picky about the sound, some of them. Right. Um, so... I think the reason that that caught my attention was because, I mean, it's fascinating to hear you say that it was that fast that I got that first article out. Um, I actually didn't realize it was it was that quick. But I, what was unique about that was that one of the fans emailed Ted Jensen, who was the mastering engineer, yeah. and he replied in private um, saying, no, it's not the best, is it? But that's what I had to work with, and that's what the band wanted. And this fan, uh, without his permission, um, posted this in public. And that was the bit that was brought to my attention. So that was the first unusual thing was to to actually get feedback from the people working on the record, you know, even right. though it had not been sanctioned. Then the other fascinating thing was the fact that this kind of alternative version of the album existed on the PlayStation game Guitar Hero, where, you know, it's one of these games where you, you have a controller and you play along with the musicians and you score points depending on how accurate your performance is. Right. Um, in order to kind of make the game work, they needed what are called stems, which is mm -hmm. not the full mix of the game, but it would be, they would separate out drums, bass, guitar, vocals. Um, and those files had been sent to the gaming company months at least, a, a, a long time before the final album came out. And earlier in the production process, before the decision had been made to go for this super loud result... So, again, very quickly, I heard this claim that, that the album sounded better in the in the game than it than the and I thought that was ridiculous mm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but when I listened to the examples and kind of got hold of some, you know, was kind of able to verify that they were genuine, I was like, wow, that this really is the case. Um, and so, yeah, I I posted a couple of uh, blog posts. I was experimenting with blogging at that point. I think I've been doing it for a year or two. Um, you know, kind of commenting on this and giving my own technical opinion. And I did some fairly rudimentary analysis of it, you know, kind of looking at the waveforms and showing that they were clipped in the way that I described right. before, that the tops of them had been sliced off. Right. Um, because there were people going, no, there's nothing wrong with it. It's meant to sound like this is absolutely <laughs> fine. And, and I kind of was like, well, actually, it's doing this, which is not kind of normal. You know, that's not the, the way records are usually mastered. Right. And it caught people's imagination. I mean, it wasn't just me. There was somebody who was also called Ian, uh, confusingly enough, started a petition, <laughs> which ended up with 20,000 signatures. Um, and I think the rule of thumb is that if one person signs a petition or writes a letter, then that's probably at least 10 people in the real world who mm. feel the same as them. So, you know, there was a lot of Metallica fans were upset about this. And yeah, it got picked up by initially by Music Radar, then by Wired Magazine, then by, and it, it ended up in the Wall Street Journal and I ended up on BBC Radio 4 talking about it. Um, so yeah, just for a crazy few weeks there, I was suddenly, my little blog that had been getting a few hundred visitors a, a month was getting tens of thousands of visitors. Um, and everybody was kind of interested in my opinions about this record.